starts with education for all of us, and that's why we're here. So with that, um, we are going to turn it over to our speakers, and I want to introduce Cindy Cathy first. If you, I think most of you know Cindy, but I've had a great opportunity to work with her as put, putting this uh, presentation together. It is just so great to have Cindy in the role that she's playing. She's a visionary, and she works really hard, and she really understands what we're trying to do and is a real collaborator. So I'm going to read her bio real quickly, and then I'm going to turn it over to her because she's got a lot to tell you. She's been an educator for 27 years, and she's been a teacher for 14 and an administrator for 13 of those 27 years. As an administrator, she's been a principal, director of curriculum and professional development, and assistant superintendent for educational services. She is currently the superintendent for the San Leandro Unified School District and has worked for the district for 13 years. She holds an elementary and secondary teaching credential received from San Jose University, State University, and she completed her administrative credential and master's degree at St. Mary's College. Cindy has dedicated her career to building schools and systems that serve all students with a focus on closing the achievement gap and preparing students for college and careers. Cindy recognizes the importance of collaboration and works hard to foster positive community partnerships. We're proud to have Cindy and the San Leandro Unified School District as a partner with the Chamber, and please join me in welcoming her to the So to help me today tell our story, I have um, Song Chin Ben Dib, our Assistant Superintendent for Business Services, Song, and then Linda Granger, the Principal of San Leandro High School, Maine, and Fred T. Korematsu Campus. When you hear things sometimes in the community about our schools, our, there's many stories to be told about our schools. Our schools are great places, and yes, as Gay said, we have some challenges, and we're going to talk about that today. But we were all um, at the start of the school year, and we have continued that theme of telling our stories. Um, the, at the principals' meetings, when the principals come together, somebody is telling a story about something that um, was happening in their school and how it was handled or what the great celebration was. So in um, aligned completely and totally with rethinking schools and rethinking how we work together and having an opportunity to tell our story, I really appreciate San Leander by design and bringing this group together to, so that we can tell our story. Um, and it, it's only part of the story. So I'd be here all day. You'd have to be here all day with me to hear um, the full story. So I'm going to start with smart money. And um, you've already heard it tonight, in, today, in um, the opening remarks of just about everybody, that education is really key. Um, it's our job, my job as a superintendent of San Leandro Schools, is to provide a high-quality education for every student in our school. I'm going to share some data with you. Um, a little bit later, but what our goal is, is so that every student graduates from high school college ready or career ready, because that's what's needed. That brings um, businesses, pro, you know, um, employees that are um, just exactly what you need, critical thinkers, problem solvers, doers, um, they're smart, they're ready to work, that raises the level of income, and people spend their money, and then that improves the quality of so that's the cycle that we're all in here together um, working towards making sure. And for us, education is a key part of that. Um, you've already heard tonight, today, sorry, I don't, I, yeah, it's about being up at 4 o'clock in the morning. It feels like night. <laughs> anyway, this morning, um, you've already heard about the role of public schools. And there are options, and it is competitive. Um, there are other schools that families can choose to go to, and we want um, all of our schools to be serving the needs of our students. We know that um, all of the, pretty much two-thirds of the jobs that are out there now require an education beyond high school. So high school diploma is critical. And that's one of our missions that every, every student leave our school district with a high school diploma. The song's going to go back and cover those for you in a minute. Um, what we know is a well-educated and trained workforce can mean the difference between growth in business or the closing down of businesses. We know that the partnerships are what it's all about because our youth today are the future leaders for tomorrow. They are your employees coming up as soon as they leave our school system. 
they enter, if we've done our job, they enter the workforce. We also know that um, community supported schools retain high teachers. And what we know about instruction in my field is that what happens every day in the classroom in terms of instruction is one of the most important things that we can provide for our, um, for our students. So keeping and attracting high quality teachers is a priority for us in our district. There's lots of, um, one of the very first things that I know realtors tell me is, and realtors ask me is, tell me how the schools are doing, because that's what my clients are asking them. So high, high visibility in terms of how the schools in a community are doing. And we want to be able to say our schools are great. Our schools are competitive with anyone around us, and we're doing a great job. Um, there's term, in terms of market value, in terms of um, long-term viability of, the, of a quality workforce, it starts with the educational system, in our opinion. Now, one of the things that we wanted to spend a little bit of time on, because this is about education and ha helping the community understand how schools are financed. So I'm going to ask Song um, to come up and kind of walk us through a few slides about school finance. Thank you. Uh, if you could flip back to a um, couple of slides right here. Uh, you heard a story about Lafayette um, education, how the home values and uh, impacting the community. Here is a slide that can speak uh, probably better than uh, the story that we just heard about uh, with the degrees, the different levels of education in terms of the comparison and earning power um, is almost um, three, four times advanced degree um, compared to just a high school diploma. And um, this is, you know, much more uh, speaks to the value of critical, how critical it is in terms of education to the state and our city and also to our community as a whole. And of course, the, the flip side of that is unemployment. Um, we are in the Great Recession. Unemployment, unemployment is in the double digits. Um, the latest we heard is still in the 12% or so, hovers around that percentage. It hasn't gone down. So what does that mean to people with education? Um, as you can see to, to us the left, uh, the, with no high school diploma, it's about 14%. That was the data as of 2010, this year. With a bachelor's or higher degree, this is 4.6. It's not great, but in terms of percentage, meaning how many, one in Four to six people you know, will have, with a higher degree, can have you know, a, a, a better job or actually employed. Next, please. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, funding sources of school districts. And I know the general public um, sometimes have some questions or misconception about money going to the school districts. And we just want to clarify from the beginning that about bonds. Uh, it's fantastic, we just got a bond measure, Measure M passed. But that money is for tangible, tangible, ten, tangible products, for infrastructure. It's not money for something that's fungible. 90% of the budget comes from the state. Now here's a soft st story. As you know, the economy right now is uh, going up by almost 25 billion. The last we heard this was 19. So it depends on what day you hear. So in three days, it may go up even further. So 90% of our income for our school district comes from the state. And we have no control whatsoever. If the state has no money, and we down at the local level, we're scrambling. We have 8,900 students in our schools. Those students will be there, regardless of whether we have money from Sacramento or not. So um, as you can see, also the green shaded areas, 90% also goes to salaries and benefits. This is a part that we talk about tangible, fungible, I'm sorry. So 90% come from the state, 90% goes to salary and benefits. So it's pretty simple the story. If we have money, we pay people. If we don't, we gotta figure out some way. So let's take a look at the ranking of um, San Leandro schools as compared to all the schools, all the districts in the county. Uh, we are, if I can count this correctly, we're the second from last. Um, what it tells us is that, you know, we spend within our means. We have the money, we can pay people when we can better quality teachers, uh, high 
qualified uh, support staff, and so on and so on. Um, this is a total fund level per student. That counts into parcel taxes, all this local income. So per student, we have only $8,700. If you look, for example, Berkeley, um, I believe they just passed a renewal of parcel tax, $13,000. That's $5,000 additional per student. You count 8,900 students, how much money they have at their disposal to do a lot of great things for the students. Um, the latest data shows that we are 44th in the nation about spending per, uh, spending per student. Um, that hovers between 44 and 47. I, I think it's great news down from 47 to 44, but nonetheless, um, we still have a lot to, to achieve. California, if you look at California, it advanced a lot. Probably still the seventh in terms of economics or uh, in the world in terms of economics for California, and yet we're spending 44th you know, within our own country per student. That tells a story of how, in terms of priorities for education. Um, this is in terms of ranking. Uh, California spends $2,500 less uh, for this fiscal year per student. Uh, if you look at a ranking, Mississippi versus California, still two spots higher than California. I'm sure if you have a conversation with anybody outside of this country, people very likely will know about California than Mississippi. And yet we spend less on per student level. Um, the average, as you can see, national average is about a little bit over $11,000, and California is 88000 um, Before Cindy goes into this slide here, um, one thing that we talk about, education and home values, and uh, of course, the other part, part of that is uh, the conversation of the multiplier. Uh, earlier on you talk, you, you saw how much um, in terms of uh, how we spend in education. Those with higher uh, degrees, uh, the earning power is much more greater than those with just high school. Um, the, in terms of a multiplier, you know, um, the, what we consider trigger down economics, you know, in the Reagan era, or uh, about how the domino effects. People, this, you know, with better incomes, very likely will spend more in the community. You know, all the way from, from supplies for schools to uh, dry cleaning stores to even the car dealership. So it's so much um, important that uh, we have a good education and how we can support our community. And I believe this is today, today is the conversation about businesses and education. And next we're gonna talk about infrastructure. Mm -hmm. 